Every single couple of years, the NBA seems to go through a change. The top six player in the league normally doesn't change year by year. The names may rotate spots, but normally the six players you see are normally the ones that stay up there for a good amount of time. There are sometimes generational type players that just always will be that good. But let's say from the seventh spot to the 15th, those names seem to always flip. They always change year by year. Every single season, either some upcoming star or somebody that's just having a breakout year seems to sneak into one of those spots and kick somebody out that seems to finally be regressing. And this is more than ever, there's a couple young stars in this league that look poised to break into those spots. So here are five players that I think can definitely jump in and become superstars next season. Um, but before we get started, hi, my name is Alpha B. I make basketball videos here on YouTube. As you can see, if you scroll through the 40 plus I have on this channel. And if you guys enjoy that, I would love if you guys would stay and hit that subscribe button. It really lets me know what you guys like and what you guys love to see from me. It takes two seconds and I would love to have you guys back here. But with that being said, let's get into this video. Bam! What a play! A two-handed block of a baseline dunk. Now, the first guy I have on this list is somebody I've made a whole video about before, and that is Bam Adebayo. Now, Bam Adebayo has become one of the best defenders in this league, and every single year he's been in the league, he's taken incredible jumps to become a better player. As just last season, he made his second all-defensive team. He was fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting, and he was simply one of the best playmaking centers in this game. But in the playoffs, a lot of his weaknesses were shown that he's not that crazy polish as a scorer. He's more of a lob option and a pick and roll option. The mid-range shot is good, but it can definitely improve and his touch around the rim can definitely get better. And if he's able to work on those things and become a better scorer while keeping some of his playmaking abilities and still being one of the best defenders in the league, you can watch out for Bam Adebayo to become probably the Miami Heat's most important, probably best player. And you can see him jump into the upper echelons of NBA players and probably be the second to maybe third best center in this league behind Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. Plus with some of the Miami Heat's new additions like Kyle Lowry, PJ Tucker, and Markeith Morris, you can look for the Miami Heat to be one of the best defending teams in the league and Bam Adebayo to be the complete anchor for that. Being one of the most switchable players in the league, a great rim protector, and just an overall great pick and roll defender. And when you put all these tools together, you can have somebody that can definitely not only be an all-star starter, but jump into the second or third all NBA team make all defensive first team and probably even have a shot at winning the defensive player of the year. And that is somebody that definitely deserves some consideration as a superstar in this league. Back the other way to Levine. The athleticism down the floor and it's Levine. The second guy on this list is somebody that I've loved to watch and grow since his first couple years in this league, and that is Zach Levine. Now, Zach Levine is somebody that I would think suffers from what I like to call the Devin Booker syndrome. A guy that's putting up great stats, but on a pretty bad team. But last season, Zach Levine did something that was absolutely incredible. Last year, Zach Levine averaged 27 points per game, five rebounds, five assists on 51% shooting and 42% from three and 84% from the line, all on 19.4 shots per game. Now, the only players ever in NBA history to not only average that many points on that level of efficiency, it goes Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Larry Bird, Dale Ellis, and the list's most recent addition, Zach Levine. And if you add the criteria that these players must attempt about five three-pointers a game while Zach Levine attempted eight, the list gets even smaller with him and Steph Curry being the only two people on this list. Now, I don't know how hard this is to imagine for some people, but to average 27 points per game on 50% shooting and 42% from three, on 19 attempts per game and eight three-point attempts is absolutely insane for anyone. And to do it on a team with limited offensive options where you know you will be double teamed most of the night is also absolutely incredible. So I think Zach Levine, the only thing he's missing is the team around him to show that he can be a winning player. And once he does do that, he'll be just like Devin Booker and be added into the upper echelons of NBA players in this league. And this season, he looks right to do that with not only the additions of Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan, but the previous additions last season of Nikola Vucevic and the transcendent defensive ability of somebody like a Patrick Williams that's developing nicely into a great NBA player. And should everything fall into place and the Bulls make the playoffs, Zach Levine may erupt into one of the best players in this league and might finally get the recognition he definitely deserves. Offensive rebound, LaMelo. LaMelo ball! Quarter. And the next player I have on this list is the one, the only LaMelo Ball. 
Now, coming into the last season, the Charlotte Hornets took an amazing gamble at the third pick, picking LaMelo Ball, a guy that a lot of people either saw as a complete bust or one of the best steals in this draft. And it definitely did not take long for LaMelo Ball to prove which side of the bracket he was on, as he erupted at one point in the season, averaging about 17 points a game, six rebounds, six assists, steal and a half on 44% shooting and 35% from three killing all the noise about whether or not he can actually play in this league, if he's actually polished and disciplined enough, and can his shooting form translate to the big leagues. And I had the Charlotte Hornets at one point as the fourth seed in the East, but with some untimely injuries to the Charlotte Hornets, they sadly fell out the playoffs and fell in the playing tournament to make the NBA playoffs, ending LaMelo's rookie year on a sour note, but he did end up winning the rookie of the year, beating out Anthony Edwards. Now, with that being said, it's not often where you see a second year player able to burst into one of the top 15 players in the league, but LaMelo Ball seems to be one of the players that has the talent to do it. Because coming into this year, the Charlotte Hornets finally made some decisions. They not only cut ties to Devontae Graham so they can go fully in on LaMelo Ball and Terrogi at the guard spots, but they made some additions in both Mason Plumlee and Kelly Oubre, two guys that are incredibly athletic and fit this team's scheme while drafting James Buck Knight and Kai Jones. Again, two more incredibly athletic players while still keeping Miles Bridges and Gordon Hayward, two guys that definitely can get them some buckets at the end of the game. So I think we can confidently say that this team is definitely honing in on its identity, being a very fast paced transition oriented team that can definitely play above the rim. And I think we can all say after watching LaMelo Ball from his Chino Hills days to playing in Lithuania, to at Spire and then in Australia, we can all say the fast paced run and gun type of offense is where he is at his best. And building a team around him like this is exactly what the Charlotte Hornets needed to do. And I think we'll definitely see the best of LaMelo Ball coming out this season. And should the Charlotte Hornets be able to make the playoffs, you can definitely see him as one of the best players in this league and become one of the league's best guards and become probably a superstar in this league. Bonus switches on to Fox. That's a mismatch. Fox going to try and go to work with the... Next, we have another guard on this list that I love to watch, and that is De'Aaron Fox. Now, last year, De'Aaron Fox definitely flew under the radar to a lot of people simply because he's on the Sacramento Kings. But if you watch any of these games and you saw how well this man played, you'd understand why I have him on this list. Last year, De'Aaron Fox averaged 25 points a game, three and a half rebounds, seven assists on 47% shooting and 32% from three. That being one of the only bright spots on that Sacramento Kings teams outside of Tyrese Halliburton. And I also think De'Aaron Fox is another player that suffers from the Devin Booker syndrome, a guy that's on a really bad team but putting up amazing numbers. And if he was on a good team, he could definitely show that he is one of the best players in this league and can play winning basketball. And while I don't see the Sacramento Kings actually making it anywhere next year, I could definitely see these numbers becoming even better for De'Aaron Fox and him showing just how talented as a player he is. And if he can do that, I can definitely see the Sacramento Kings win numbers even increasing a little more but I do not see them making the playoffs at all. And that'll be very hard for people to view him as one of the best players in this league if he doesn't. But I think we simply have to keep in mind that putting up 25 points per game, seven assists on 48% shooting on 19 shots per game is not any easy feat when you are probably the only consistent offensive option on your team. Tyrese Halliburton went down with an injury. Marvin Bagley seems to be going nowhere. Buddy Heald has regressed every single season since that year he averaged 20. It just doesn't seem like anybody on the Sacramento Kings but him is going anywhere upwards. And I understand being on a team like that is definitely where numbers would inflate but not while keeping up the level of scoring efficiency that he does. So I think De'Aaron Fox is another player we can look to that can definitely become one of the better players in this league. They give it to Savonis. He's going to drive to the basket. Score and a foul! DeMontis Savonis! And lastly on this list, I have DeMontis Savonis. Now, Last year, the Indiana Pacers just seemed to be one of the teams that could not catch a break. Every single way they turn, there seems to be a new problem. Michael Brogdon goes down for a couple games, you trade away Victor Oladipo and get Karis LeVert, who turns out to have a kidney problem that he has to be out an extended amount of time with. You lose Miles Turner earlier in the season when he looks like to having one of the best defensive years of his career that could probably win him a Defensive Player of the Year award and you just have no consistency throughout the entire year. But the one guy that was giving them consistent play was Dantan Sabonis, who averaged 20 points, 12 rebounds, and 6.7 assists, and 1.2 steals. 
at the power forward spot and became one of the best bigs in this game. Along with his amazing footwork and innate ability to finish around the rim, Dante Sabonis showed that he's one of the best playmaking bigs in this game as he averaged 6.7 assists, being the third best playmaker in the power forward and center spot behind Nikola Jokic and Draymond Green. And with some better luck this year, the Indiana Pacers should be back in the playoffs and Dante Sabonis should be ripe to inject his name into the conversation of being one of the best players in this league since every single year he seems to always find a way to get better. And it's just another player where once he does start winning, you will see his name start to come up in a lot more conversation as some of the best players in this league. That's my list guys, that's five players I think are definitely ripe to become superstars next season. Let me know if you guys think there's anybody I left off this list or anybody you think that may not become that great. I'm always there to argue or talk about any of your opinions in the comment section below. But with that being said, if you're new here, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out, lets me know what you guys like, and it only takes two seconds and it really does help me out. But with that being said, it's FLB, that's my time, and I'm out.